Can you guys hear me well in the back? Okay, okay great. So um, I've been invited here today to talk a little bit about uh, the carriers and how the carriers are repositioning themselves coming back into the mobile ecosystem. Happen to see some of our friends in the audience as, as we start. Um, <clears throat> really, I, I started looking at this as we're looking about moving uh, beyond traditional app stores. And uh, it struck me that what's traditional? Um, I don't think there's such a thing as traditional because the app stores as we see them today have been around two, three years maybe, and everybody looks as uh, iTunes or Google Play as, as the traditional app stores at this. But reality is that the carriers own the traditional app stores. They have been the app stores for the last 10 years plus. So there's been a shift in the paradigm of, of the app store, where, it came, where, it, where does it come from and, and who really owns it. And, uh, I think the other reality is that uh, as of today, the carriers have been squeezed out of really their own playing field. And uh, this presentation is really about what are the carriers doing, how are we seeing it, and, and how the carriers trying to insert themselves into the ecosystem. Uh, <clears throat> just a little bit about the boring stats that we have. Uh, I try and take some focus on really how big is the market and really zoom it down and really describe how what is the, market, the potential market for the carriers and, and where are they going to attack it. Um, really, if you look at uh, 2011, it was really uh, the year that the smartphone shipments overtook the PCs. Uh, the tablet shipments uh, started coming in really in full force. Uh, we're seeing uh, over 250 million uh, shipments uh, of tablets by 2016. That's a 5x increase uh, over the 55 million uh, shipments we saw in 2011. Um, I think also the most interesting part is that over 50% of the tablets uh, will have 4G uh, inserted into the tablet. I think this is becoming more and more mainstream. It's all, all also about the, the carrier's dream on this end where they talked about that every person in the world is going to have more than one cellular subscription. This is one of the directions where it's heading. So good news on that end. But um, moving forward into how the carrier is coming and in, inserting themselves into uh, this fastest growing technology and um, <clears throat> the space is, is, is going to be so big that they cannot afford to be without uh, a dominant place in it. Now, um, we're talking about uh, <clears throat> content. The content is, it, it's all about money, money, money for the carriers. Uh, I think right now the, the carriers have really said um, how big is the market going to be and, and really how do we capture it. Um, we, we're all talking about uh, social games revenues. We're all familiar with the really big players. Uh, obviously, Zynga has a huge positioning in this. Facebook is, is very involved. But right now, we're seeing that this is close to a $9 billion market uh, as we approach 2014. Uh, and it's going to continue to grow to more than $11 billion uh, by 2016. <clears throat> I think uh, if things go well, they're projecting about 25% increase. I actually think this could go even higher than that if the, if the models that uh, we're projecting are, continue to grow. Um, we're using here just to, as an illustration, really showing the, the rapid curve here. And it, it's, it's not even a hockey stick. I think the hockey stick has already happened. It's, it's just continued growth at this point. Um, so talking down, narrowing it down to f first the market, then, then the, uh, the smartphones. But now of the smartphones, what is the penetration? We're seeing clearly right now that uh, Android is, is dominating the market, um, it, and I think that's going to continue to grow. Uh, Apple has, obviously, its 30% uh, share. Uh, but what we're seeing, the more and more mainstream is, is Android is coming on. It's more of the household phone. It's really replacing much of what was the feature phone in the old days. Uh, right now, the way Apple has positioned, it's more of a higher end than, than most of the, the, the generic uh, Android market. Um, <clears throat> right now, as, as we know, uh, the RIM market has been uh, continue to decline, and, and I, I really believe that the, uh, the Android market is going to continue to grow versus uh, Apple. Uh, <clears throat> now, app stores by the numbers. We, we talked about uh, app stores right in the beginning and, and, and what really are the app stores, but over a very, very quick period of time, we see that um, the total revenues uh, paid to developers year to date is astronomical already on Apple. It's about $5.5 billion. We pulled this directly from the latest uh, releases from Apple this morning. Uh, in addition to that, it, we're seeing that uh, Google Play is, is trailing way behind with uh, only, uh, only about 320 million plus paid to developers. So 
there's obviously uh, something really wrong here. You have 50% of, of all uh, smartphones are, are Android, but if you look at the combined here, uh, only, only 320 out of uh, s about 6 uh, billion is, is, Android, is Google Play revenues. So I think we've got a long way to go. There's a huge uh, opportunity to capture here. Um, <clears throat> I think that uh, the facts are really Apple, and Apple is dominating the revenues. Uh, Google and Amazon are following. They're coming on strong. The iOS accounts uh, are setting up uh, payments for deliveries, for deliveries an easy payment mechanism. Uh, In-app purchases are definitely the majority of revenues in both stores. Um, we're estimating about 60%. Uh, but what's interesting is that uh, Google Play has a huge amount of downloads compared to uh, what they have in revenues. And if you look at uh, total downloads here, they have uh, 11 billion alone in Q4, but the revenues do not stack up to that. So, Obviously, there's, uh, this, there's, there's a lot of room for growth on this part. <clears throat> so what we're seeing here is uh, there's an overall shift in the market. We really are seeing across the board that carriers are repositioning themselves in the mobile content ecosystem. Um, if you look at uh, carry, the carrier revenues in, in the content store, and spe specifically on games and mobile entertainment, I think they've lost 80 to 90% of the revenues that they had in this space. Uh, and this is over a, a very short period of time. You're looking probably at a two to three year span where it went from billions to literally nothing. Uh, <clears throat> the carriers are coming back in to looking to drive content sales and virtual goods to their large uh, subscriber bases. Uh, and it, the focus is, is that Every carrier is, is in the process of launching an app store of some kind in their space. Uh, I, I, some of them have announced that some have launched, some are in the process of developing it and, and building it and going to be launching it later this year. But I think that if you look at how the carrier does things traditionally, they will leverage their infrastructure and their hundreds of millions of users. Um, they have the mechanisms that uh, neither Google Play or, or, I, or, an, or Apple has. They have one-click billing. If they can do this right, if they integrate the content correctly, if they do it directly into their billing systems, you have a one-click billing system that will clearly surpass Google Play and also beat with the, uh, the Apple experiences today. Uh, the other part is that the carriers still own the real estate on the screen. In the US specifically, the carriers dictate what is on the screen when you buy the phone, what is preloaded and what's not preloaded. They can dictate just about everything on there. Um, Obviously, on, on Android devices, there still will be um, a presence of Google Play, but the carriers have the ability to maneuver the, the icon around. They could, they could position their own icons, their own um, game stores or app stores at a higher place on the deck actually with a higher visibility than, than Google can. So they have a, a great degree of power that I think a lot of the market is, is forgetting about and that is still to be utilized on the new smartphones. Um, <clears throat> I think also, uh, if you look uh, back at how the carriers do things, they have, they have two things. They're very, very heavy on, on the traditional marketing, uh, brick and mortar. There are retail stores just about on every corner all over the US. If you combine TV ads, retail stores, all the brick and mortar advertising that you have, you have a really powerful uh, marketing mechanism that is all about showing the consumer where to find content. Uh, whoever has the strongest distribution or, or, or marketing power, putting it in front of the consumer will ultimately win or capture a huge deal, a huge part of the pie. Um, so I, and I, I think I could speak for whether it's T-Mobile or AT&T or, or even Verizon. If you look at it, there's not necessarily, there's not a, a day you don't go by that you don't see something on TV advertising for their new bundles, their new phones, their new subscriptions, everything is there. All they have to do is integrate this back into um, the messaging that they have, saying, hey, come and get your games, come get your content on, on T-Mobile or AT&T and Verizon now. I mean, it's, it's there already. Uh, it was done in the past, super, super successful. There's no reason why this, this uh, machine can't get started again. So uh, how, does this, how does this work, Playphone, then? So um, Playphone is uh, a company that's been uh, in this space for nearly a decade. Um, <clears throat> We have launched thousands and thousands and thousands of SKUs in terms of content. Uh, back in the days, we, we've been experts on ringtones, uh, traditional games on feature phones. 
and now they moved very, very heavily into social gaming. Um, at present, uh, Playphone has strategic partnerships with all, uh, actually with most uh, large US carriers. I've been uh, instructed not to announce the names today, but I, I will if you come and see us afterwards, we can talk about it, but I'm not uh, officially allowed to announce them. Uh, <clears throat> at the moment, we have been pulled in uh, to help the carriers build their ecosystems back up. Um, I'd like to say that right now we're working with uh, more than two-thirds of the entire U.S. Uh, carrier base and, and really in, in helping them saying, how do you build it? How do you compete against uh, Google Play and, and also iOS to recapture some of the revenues coming from there? Uh, <clears throat> what we also have is during the uh, discussions is it's very important to us that we, we get direct access to the billing system at the carrier level, not just because this is an asset to us, but it's also in how how can we leverage our expertise into um, building a, 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 um, an experience for the consumer so that it goes to one click billing, there's none, none of this enter your phone number here or click, are you really, really sure you want to buy this? Absolutely sure, yes, it's, it's basically buy and click and it's done. And you get a receipt confirmation saying that you purchased something so the customer doesn't feel like they've been lured or, or tricked in any which way afterwards. <coughs> um, Playphone has developed a free SDK, um, super, super easy to integrate, that the carriers are actively helping us push out in the marketplace to developers, so that uh, you as a developer come to Playphone or, or come to a carrier and saying, hey, I really want to be a part of your store, and they say, great, go integrate with Playphone, it's free, it's frictionless, uh, and it will provide you with a set of tools that you can expand on and help monetize better. Um, and then uh, back into the billing, uh, if you integrate with us, uh, the way we set up the SDKs is that it, it, it will allow you to, to integrate once and, and, and really distribute your content everywhere. So, for example, a small developer who has uh, limited resources can come to us, integrate. Uh, we'll give them access to over 20 carrier channels and everywhere you want to be in terms of uh, having to set up relationships or agreements with every single carrier across the country or across the world. So I um, want to play a quick video on this, if I can get this to work. As a developer, you want to make cool games, right? What if there was a platform that lets you focus on creating awesome games while someone else takes care of the rest? Introducing Playphone, the world's most developer-friendly mobile social gaming network. Playphone helps developers to socialize, distribute, market, and monetize any game in any app store, regardless of platform. Playphone's seamless integration allows anyone to connect and play with their friends, easily discover new games, purchase virtual goods, and compare their rank and achievements. Whoa, that's powerful stuff. Let's take a look under the hood, where you'll find Playphone's revolutionary performance optimization platform, POP for short. POP gives you the ability to rapidly set up, test, and optimize events within your game without having to release a new version, saving you valuable time and money. Utilizing POP is as simple as filling out a form and adding a single line of code to your game. Playphone also solves all your App Store billing needs and provides exclusive one-click U.S. carrier billing not found anywhere else in mobile social gaming. Our developer portal provides access to your valuable data, including user engagement stats, lifetime value analysis, funnel metrics, and more. With Playphone added to your game, you have it all. By leveraging our industry-leading tools, technology, and relationships, your app is on the fast track to being number one. Playphone. Play games together. Join the Playphone Developer Network today. Get started now by going to developer.playphone.com. Okay. So a um, couple of quick roundups and really showing what we are delivering on the carrier decks, what's going to be showing up over time, and really how our, our main uh, social gaming network is set up and, and really how uh, you guys will be seeing it along. Um, so we, we, we believe that the uh, Playphone SGN social gaming network that is, delivers a rich cross-platform social gaming experience. Um, what we're showing is live cross-platform multiplayer games. So whether you're playing on an iOS device or an Android device or a Windows device, you can uh, play synchronous multiplayer any given time. Uh, we, we've talked about one click in our billing, uh, which is a, a, a tremendous asset. Uh, talking about the support uh, of iOS, Android, uh, Windows 7, as well as HTML5 across all platforms. And then um, 
obviously there's the standard uh, features and functionalities involved in, in the social gaming network. It, it's all about achievements, leaderboards, but uh, invite friends, uh, get friend updates, and, and of course uh, integrate to your favorite uh, social networking site. So if you, you can use your Facebook ID if you want to. If you're not a fan of social networking, you, you can just set up your own play phone or, or it will be your carrier ID. Um, <coughs> Playphone has a, a, a huge set of features. I, I really don't want to go into every single one in detail, but I just to kind of highlight some of them, the part is we're really focusing on really the four key uh, parts there, social integration, discovery and personalization, uh, monetization, and then obviously the, uh, the social gaming network platform features. Within each, there's some uh, really strong features. Universal login, uh, I, I can mention this if you, for example, on uh, an iPhone, you can, you can log in, play the game. Uh, you, you, you can then put your iPhone away. You can go and grab your iPad. And if you, if you just type in your login, uh, it will, the game will continue exactly where you left it off. All your achievements, leaderboards, your high scores, everything is, is following you because you're logging in through, through the, the, the network which is stored in the cloud. <clears throat> uh, we have, uh, obviously, chat, uh, cross-network uh, games promotion around, uh, <clears throat> as well as global uh, cross-carry support. One of the key features in the network is uh, play credits, uh, something that we are currently building up uh, extremely strong. We're already doing some testing on some of the carriers with a huge amount of success. So uh, if you want to hear more about that, how you can integrate to it, uh, see me after the presentation. Um, obviously, subscription, bill subscription billing is key for, for revenues. Uh, we all know that if you want to make money, it's, it's really in, in, in getting customers on and getting on the monthly recurring charge. Um, I showed the video, and in the video was a, a, a description about our latest feature was POP, performance uh, optimization platform. Uh, and then really just talking about here, I think the key, the key advantage here is really uh, after the developer has integrated to us, um, there's a large set of analytics tools that the developer has to work with. So they can always at any given time go in and say, how's my game doing? What's the downloads, DAUs, MAUs? Uh, how many minutes, hours in the tra in, 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 on the platform has been done? And uh, I'm really feeling that the, the developer can, can Get, it, get control of what's happening with the game even after it's launched. Like, for example, with Pop, um, one of the key features there is um, you integrate it, it's on a server-based solution so that if you, if you submit your game into the carrier or iOS or, or, or Google, um, there's no need to resubmit your game afterwards because everything sits on the server side. Uh, you can do live A-B testing yourself as a developer. You can go in and really just control everything that you want to do. You can change out the pop messaging. You can change the price points. Everything is done uh, dynamically on the server side. Um, pretty much wraps up the whole thing. Uh, really, we'd love to talk to you developers that are here, or if there's other carriers that we are not familiar with here, love to come and see me. Um, if, if you want to connect with us, try and download uh, the SDK at uh, developer.playphone.com. Or if you have any questions, uh, just send a, an email to devrelations at playphone.com. And they're here in the audience today, so if any of you guys want to talk to us, then, then please do so. And uh, thank you very much. I, I know I'm out of time, so. Well, uh, um, yeah. you're the last presentation, so we have time for as many questions as you oh, can so get I'm away with. Oh, thank you. going for another hour. I have one more presentation now. Yeah. Well, let, let me uh, yeah. ask you to. Uh, That's it. Thank you. <laughs> as somebody in the industry, uh, if you had a crystal ball, we're seeing. Smartphones get bigger, tablets get smaller. If you wanted to predict ahead in for this time next year, would you have an idea of the predictions of the form factors of the devices that we're going to see out there? I think the, the, I think that the form factors are there. I think you'll probably see something in between as well. But I, I think it's more about having the penetration of smartphones just continuing to grow. Um, I, I'm not going to speculate what Apple or Samsung are going to going to be shipping. So I, I think the form factors we've seen. Any questions from the audience? Oh, yep. Thank you. Hi there, thanks. Uh, if, if I have uh, some apps with some traffic on uh, Verizon, uh, Android store, uh, what would you recommend I do to monetize that? Uh, you know, they've got really kind of, I guess, maybe mercurial policies around advertising, what support, what's allowed, what's not, analytics, you know, whether your app uses location or not. I mean, they've got 
it's it's been uh, tough for me to just kind of understand what you know what's allowed on Verizon Android Store versus not. Uh, any recommendations? Um, do you have a direct contact at Verizon you're speaking to, or are you just going through the developer portal? Uh, yeah, they they've been you know pretty pretty helpful in providing you know their their email addresses for for different issues. Okay. It's a big company, I, a lot of emails. I, I can't speak for them, but I know that they have a major initiative going on to, to really try to centralize and get gaming as, as a main initiative on, on their decks and, and kind of separate that out. Um, I think what they're, I can't speak, is anybody from Verizon in the audience here? They're hiding. Um, no, I, I can't speak for what they're doing directly, but w what I can tell you is that um, I think over the next couple of months, they'll see the initiatives uh, shaping up, and, and people like you will will, will be uh, in a better position to to get your games not just launched, but also working on traffic and analytics. Oh, question over here. Hi, I could see one of the challenges for the carriers in the future as. Um, as all these games become more kind of cross-platform portable, where you play them on not just your phone, but on tablets, some of which aren't 3G, 4G equipped, your PC, your TV, other devices that aren't directly connected with the carrier, how do you see that impacting the carrier's ability to get into the ecosystem? Do you think that customers are still comfortable being billed by their, quote, phone company when they're playing these games on a variety of different types of devices? Uh, I, I do. I mean, if you look at the way the cable companies have done it, uh, the cable companies are, are now billing with your home phone, your internet connection, and your TV subscription. You rent, you're buying movies on TVs, it's coming all, all on your bill. So I think it's going to evolve in the same direction as that. Um, <clears throat> also, remember that the carriers are a trusted billing partner of the consumer. That it's a trusted household name in, in every case. So I think that that, uh, in my personal opinion is... I think that the, the consumer has a more uh, comfortable relationship with a carrier than they have with a new player in the marketplace. Thank you. So one of the great things about uh, direct carrier billing is that people say it's the key to cracking the revenue model for what Japan differentiates everything from the United States in that growth. But you've been around long enough to know that also one of the pain points of direct carrier billing in the past used to be ringtones, um, which people used to get billed on a recurring basis, which you also support. Um, can you talk a little bit about the question about friendly fraud and other issues? Because now things are so easy to buy. And fraud rates, obviously, on big purchases are always a complaint and recurring costs. Um, have you noticed any? incidental differences as opposed to just raising revenue, um, perhaps increased rates in um, fraud, re fraud requests? Okay. Um, it's, a, it's a very good question. It's, uh, <clears throat> it's also very relevant. I think what the, the carriers have done now, that if you look back, there was a great, um, there was a significant amount of uh, consumer fraud going on. People were being billed for things they had no idea they were being billed for. The terms and conditions were so small you couldn't even read them. Uh, so they were there. I think that was prim primarily in the uh, premium SMS space in the past. Uh, the carriers have now really zoomed in on this. Some of the carriers ha are not allowing any premium SMS at all, for example. Some are in the process of really cracking down on this process. Um, for the carriers that are giving or allowing direct billing, and they're not allowing it to everybody. It's not an open connection. It's very, very complicated. It's a long process to get in. Uh, but they're also putting in very heavy contract uh, requirements on it with very tight guidelines of what what the content providers need to follow. And they, um, they will police and they are policing the way that uh, the subscriptions or, or the integrations of the sales are occurring so that they, so they don't run into this consumer fraud uh, direction that they have in the past. Um, we haven't run into any of the issues, but we, we've been very clean on the way we're, we're doing the direct billing. We, we really, the last thing we need is to, to, to mismanage this at an early standpoint of the industry. So, this is the number one priority for us to, to make sure that we're 100 percent clean. Uh, Any more questions? Oh. That was a lot of questions for the last presentation. Yeah. Everyone had a coffee before, so yeah. you know. Um, I'm the just last a, guy you can leave after this is good. <laughs> uh, a quick question about uh, EULA's. Does it make sense the you know, speaking about the carrier relation and trusted relation and all? 
if you've got the end user license agreement that's effectively in place through the carrier, what do you feel the importance is of individual apps also having the EULA in place or is the relationship with the uh, carrier sufficient so that you don't need to do that? Like in the Android store, you don't get bogged down. We talk about removing pain points. I want to download Zombieville. I'm, I'm one click away, well, one click to say download and second to say open. There, there isn't that interim point. Just wondering what your thoughts are around, the pri around those issues. Is it necessary to have a second EULA in place? No. I mean, it can be, it, it, there's several different ways of doing it. You can do it on the first time you download, or it, it could be in, in, in the, the main agreement with the carry. With the first click you do it, it just includes the terms and conditions, and you, you can just have a link saying if you need to look it up, it, this is where you find it. But this is part of the reasons why, I mean, all the clicks is just really discouraging uh, consumers from buying, and, and this is uh, one of my pet peeves is to get, if you can get a one-click billing on, for the consumer, and it's valid. I mean, if you have to deliver quality content, no scams and so on, but if you can, if you can fulfill this, you, you're the carrier's on, a, on the direct track to success. So. Okay, well, thanks again, Anders. Thank you. If you're not all conferenced out, there is one more hour over at the Benaraya Hall of uh, conference tracks, so if you want to plot over there, and I believe there's an event in the reception area.